Eastern karma is significant, dif significantly different from the westernized karma, for sure. I think um, karma, from my understanding, is not the westernized thinking of like, you did bad, you'll get bad. Karma is what you put into the world as a reflection of what you and like you surround yourself with. It's more a it's more power in your hands. From my understanding of the uh, the difference is that it's not just like, oh, you did bad, you'll get bad. It's more like karma is like what you've curated for your own environment. It's a self-inflicted wound. It's not about being, it's not about venge, being um, vengeful. It's not about like, oh, the universe is gonna get you. That's a punishment. It's more like you are the power, you have the power of your own karma. You have the power of your own life, right? That's like, I, mean, I could be a misunderstanding it, but that's kind of how I understand it. How many scandals have to come out with children in Hollywood before parents stop putting their kids in Hollywood. Like, yes, your kid ended up famous and rich, but your kid also ended up not talking to you or traumatized or a serial cheater. I think that's what's so hard for people to understand is that they're willing to normally trade the fame because they think it's worth it. But most average people living averagely do pretty fine. I'd rather be average than a superstar who's so messed up from the trauma that I can't recover because there's no one safe around to talk to. No, thank you. Like I am grateful every day because I had friends and family. I have friends who were in Adam Sandler's movies growing up. I had friends who went to auditions. I had friends who tried to get into Hollywood, who were in holes, who were in multiple movies. Like I had friends growing up who like sought fame they ended up leaving Hollywood and actually reverting back like to their religion and ended up like being more wholesome. And actually some of them went, ended up on Broadway, which is pretty cool actually, but it was not a good place, Hollywood. So it's kind of ironic that these parents put their kids in these situations and then you get like a Jeanette, uh, Jeanette, is that her name? The girl from iCarly who wrote a book like saying she's happy her mom died. It's like, yeah, not these these parents aren't well intentioned just because they use their kids for money. Oh, um, on the Hollywood stuff, Allison Stoner is putting out a whole series about child star wreck, train wreck pipeline. Yes, very interesting. And then Christy uh, Carlson Romano too. They're all talking about it. All these Disney stars, all these people I knew from Mike Super Short Show or even Stevens, they're all making content about it. You know what I mean? We're gonna read this article together. I just think it's so interesting. This is from Insider. Okay, this is the celebrity section. And it says the psychology of hooking up with off limits people and why Ariana Grande is not the main villain. And I know a lot of you guys have wanted me to talk about Ariana and everything. And I just didn't know how to talk about it because to be honest with you, sometimes it's like so beyond my understanding of how people get like this, but then I just have to go trauma, 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 trauma. It sounds like an easy answer, but it's probably the right answer, right? So, So uh, let's see, some of the uh, bullet points say, a viral video pointed out that Ariana Grande has a pattern of allegedly breaking up relationships. A psychologist told Insider that some people can get into a pattern of falling for off-limit people. She also noticed that the other women, uh, or that the other woman is often judged more harshly than the man who cheated. I do find this to be true, that Ariana did seem to get criticized more than her male counterparts who engaged with her. And I will say a big part of that is that women do hold women to a higher standard. I think all of society does. Society will be, at the same time, right? Society will demonize women for not being good enough and then hold them to a higher standard than men. Women are unironically held to a higher standard than men and yet told that they can't they can't be as good as men sometimes. And that is just like, <laughs> okay, I don't, okay. So funny how it works out that way, right? So I do, and even I, listen, even I want to hold Ariana to a higher standard because she's a woman. Sometimes I am shocked at women who engage in this behavior. But again, everyone is like at fault, but I do think women are a little bit more capable than men, generally speaking. And so I do expect better from them. And so when they fail on that front, that's just very human. Humans are gonna human. I should not hold women to a higher standard than men. I just, that's my inherent bias, right? That's my inherent bias. Okay, 
So recently, news broke that Ariana Grande is supposedly dating Wicked co-star Ethan Slater after separating from her husband, Dalton Gomez, earlier this year. Shortly after a viral video called out Grande for being involved in multiple breakups as the, quote, other woman, a pattern supposedly seen in her relationships with Mac Miller, Big Sean, Pete Davidson, and Gomez, and now Slater, who was married for a decade before his alleged relationship with Grande. The video sparked discussion online with about Grande's behavior. After all, the singer did write a song titled, Break Up With Your Girlfriend, I'm Bored. Now, according to Isabel Morley, a licensed clinical psychologist who specializes in couples therapy, it's not unusual for people to be attracted to other people who are already in a monogamous relationship. It can become a pattern. Morley also said that, like in Grande's case, the quote other woman is often judged more harshly than the man who cheated on his partner. This part is so interesting because I've heard this from people in my life who have cheated. They've said the same exact thing. And I think this is interesting. They've said, um, <clears throat> off limits people can seem hotter for a few reasons. So why do people seem to always fall for folks who are already in, who are already partnered? Morley said it can be quote, incredibly attractive to see someone being a great partner, being a good parent, and to know that they have those qualities and quote, this is exactly what I've heard from people who have cheated in, in my life, you know, cause again, I want to reach out to people. I want to understand what they're, what they're thinking. How are they feeling? Why do they do it? And they've said, you know, sometimes the best person to try to be with is somebody who's already in a, su a successful relationship, somebody who is already a great father, a great mother. Sometimes the person you want is some someone who's already taken because you know that they've already accomplished this. Look, people already want them, so no, I want them. Very interesting versus my brain. And I think this is the difference. My partner, and again, we talked about this at length and we're probably gonna do so again later, we are the opposite. If somebody isn't available or isn't interested in us, we forget they exist. <laughs> like they're not a person. The moment I find out you're off limits and the moment I find out you're not interested in me, I forget you exist. You're not even a person. Like you're just a, you're now the job you are or the gender you are. You're like another category. You're not a sexual option. So it's very, 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 very easy for me to not even contemplate cheating or hitting on somebody who's taken because again, my brain just goes, oh, um, like not available, not a per like, whoop. like they become invisible. It's like, I just like, they wear an invisibility cloak and now I can't see them. Right. Is it that way for you guys? How do you guys feel? How many of you are tempted by somebody who's already engaged in a relationship? How many of you, and this is no judgment, right? We're just trying to figure it out. How many of you are actually attracted to people who are already in relationships and or when you're in a relationship, how tempted are you to go for somebody for somebody else? Because again, I'm a very like, my my brain just goes, my partner is all that. I'm very loyal. My brain just goes, my partner, my partner, my partner, my partner. I am never tempted by other people. I just don't find other people interesting Interesting when I'm in a relationship. So it's very, to be fair, it's very easy for me not to cheat because I don't feel that temptation. I'm not even slightly tempted. It's just, what's the point? But for other people, you might actually be fighting that temptation kind of like a demon. You might actually have a harder time, even though you're a good person and you're well-intentioned, you might actually because of who you are, the category of person you are, you might actually naturally just have a very, very hard time not feeling tempted, but still don't act on it, which is still good because I don't think thoughts are a crime, right? I would never, I, like my partner and I are very open about if we find other people attractive. So there's no threat to the relationship to be like, oh my God, did you see her? Did you see her? Did you see him? Like, whoa, like we have no problem saying that. But again, we're not tempted. There's not a temptation there. Um, you know what I mean? Okay, let me see. <sighs> okay, just checking your comments. Ah, uh, been with my partner seven plus years and I'm currently pregnant with our first. Yay, congratulations. He's my best friend and no one else compares so I can't relate to the temptation to others exactly it's like how I'm the same way tunnel vision when I'm in a relationship same yes I'm 100% the way you and your husband are mm -hmm. see I have ah, this is a pro you guys are in see you guys I assume are attracted to my content because some of you are probably more like me than less like me so the dilemma is that even we're reinforcing this bubble of like a lack of temptation you know oh my brain goes nope too bad see I wonder if it's like a biological difference maybe 
Married or taken people are such a turnoff for me. This doesn't make any sense. They go from hot to ew in my head. Yet yeah, exactly. Why do you think, do you guys think that we're just in the bubble of that type of person? Like, would you say one of the perks, I guess, of watching my content is that you're similar minded about love? Because that's what's interesting. Because if you're in a different category and you are reinforced by the content you listen to, to think that that's what's common, then you're just going to get, the, like, versus in my bubble, it's not common to cheat. It's not common. Like, when it happens, it's scandalous. It's considered very dysfunctional. I think the same way as you, Brittany, I've been tempted to make my feelings known while someone I liked and knew well was in a relationship but never acted on it until they ended it. Yeah, see, valid. Like, wait it out. Wait until they're available. Doesn't matter if I'm madly in love with a man. I'm not going to do a woman with a baby. I'd rather kill myself. Ah, so like somebody who's married and established already. I am shocked at how many women will go for married men because they're like attracted to the fact that they are married and have a family and everything. I'm shooketh. Now, they're usually young or pretty, like, traumatized, to be fair. When I'm in a relationship, I don't see anyone else. I only look at my partner. When I'm single, I definitely find myself lusting after people who are already taken. More jealousy, though, I think. Ah, very good to know about yourself. I'm jealous of my friend because her boyfriend is super hot, but they're also so cute and perfect together. I could never. Inter so, you, so, okay, see, what I'm hearing is, like, it's not even that you want that person. You want the relationship, which is fair. We, You know what I mean? Like, that's fair, right? To, like, say, oh, it's not even that I want your person. I would just love a relationship, right? I think that's fair. There are studies on cheating, and there are many tells that if somebody's struggling with cheating, like, if they have cheated before, obviously, if their parents have cheated, etc. I read that if they cheat on you, they're more likely to cheat on you again. And that's why it's always interesting when people, like a mistress will come in or a third person and they'll be like, I won him, I got him from you. And it's like, girl, he gonna cheat on you too. I don't know why you're holding out. Like he's not gonna do you like he did me, girl. That's why I'm always surprised that like women don't have solidarity with each other. Or that men, I've seen this better with men for some reason. Well, maybe cause why is this? I feel like when men are cheated on, even though women and men cheat at like pretty like similar rates, I'm surprised men seem to really be there for their boys when that happens. And women do too, absolutely. But that's why I'm always surprised when a woman cheats with a married man. Because I'm like, you're, you're doing the thing. What are you doing? Like I kind of feel, and this is me, I do kind of feel like if you cheat, like – how is the karma not going to come back? Am I crazy? Like, I do kind of feel like if you cheat, like, you, this is my petty thought. This is my bias. I do kind of feel like if you cheat, you deserve to be cheated on. Or if you cheat with, like, a married man or a married woman, like, what are we talking about here? You know what I mean? But I can't tell if that's really, see how I lack wisdom? <laughs> I don't know what the wise answer is here. Like, how can I feel bad that someone gets cheated on when they've cheated? Or how can I feel bad if somebody sleeps with a married person and then that married person cheats on them. Like, how can I even feel? I don't even know how I'm supposed to feel bad about this. Do you get what I'm saying? Hmm. My mom always says that once the mistress goes in the home, the mistress position is open again. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Mm-hmm. Cheeto hits the ego more for men, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so interesting. It's so interesting. Discourse says I have a much harder time not doing things I don't want to do, but I also do it when it's just me impacted. But the idea of hurting my partner instead of just having a conversation is wild. That's what I'm saying. Like, is this not the person you've dedicated yourself to in a way like, isn't it more hurtful not to have the conversation? I don't know. And look, we're not looking for perfection. We're trying to learn. Because if you're somebody who's sitting there tempted to cheat, we want to get you in a position where, like, you're not tempted to cheat. You know what I mean? So for his anniversary with his then wife, Slater posted a tr sweet tribute on Instagram last November, one that a, a Grande allegedly liked. So 
Slater is the guy on Broadway that Ariana met and he had a wife who outed the relationship as like a cheating relationship. She had no clue and she felt very blindsided by the situation, right? Um, it says this can also make the, the rush of them choosing you over their partner especially profound. Morley said, even if I, ironically it makes them a bad partner for cheating and that's what it is. It's that pick me energy. Pick me over her. I am so good. You're willing to destroy your relationship for me. I'm so amazing. You're willing to dump your boyfriend for me. I'm so amazing that you're willing to destroy your life for me. Toxicity in the city. <laughs> like toxicity. Like this does not feel crazy. Married life is looking good on you. Stop it. Thank you. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I'm very happy right now. I'm like, I'm vibing, yo. Thank you. That's what I mean. I did not work this hard to find the person of my dreams just to cheat on him. Like, what? No, ma'am. Also, if you cheat on your partner, nothing in the world can convince me that you aren't the type of person to betray your friends as well. Ooh, that's interesting i will say um because i have like a like such a diverse group of friends i know people who have cheated and they're really good friends they're not always the most understanding sometimes depending on which one i'm thinking of but a lot of them are very good friends um i do worry sometimes that some of them who maybe still justify cheating or un maybe are too sympathetic to it, might sometimes be lenient when people treat you badly or might be lenient on treating others badly in a way. Like I'm very oh, mm, hesitant about that. But otherwise, like I will say, at least for the people that I know, inner circle, outer circle, friends, family, cousins, like working friends, people I've known, they do seem to be pretty good friends. And I will say what I've noticed is that unless they're in a really, really bad place, it will it will spill over. Now, some of the people I know, I can think of one person who's cheated. Um, it did spill over into every part of their life, their job, their friendships, everything. And I can think that they had a really bad time of it all around, but I think that they were also a very poor sense of character. But I will say the, the, the people that I've known in my life, whether they're in my life now or not, some of them are very good friends to me but they were really struggling. And that's why I want to give a lot of empathy to the situation that cheating for some people feels like their only option. So it can feel less malicious to them and more desperate. Oops. Oh my gosh. I have a little scab here and I just totally, I hope it doesn't bleed. <laughs> but I think sometimes they can feel desperate. They can feel so eager to feel love or so alone in the world. They make really poor decisions. But I do think they can still be really good friends. So I, I I will say from my lived experience, I've I've been lucky enough to have good friends, good people in my life who have made mistakes like cheating. I, I definitely would say that that is true for me at least. <clears throat> okay. Um. Okay. So this article. Okay. There's also safety in liking people. Oh wait, let me switch the video okay there are there's also safety in liking people who are in relationships while crushing on someone in a relationship can seem inherently dramatic morley explained that some people do it because it prevents them from really committing to somebody if you fantasize about someone who's in a relationship they don't end up and they don't end up leaving their partner it can stay a safe crush quote it provides this sort of imaginary barrier that lets you be a little freer with that person end quote morley said since the fantasy of them cheating with you can just remain a fantasy and i think that's a really important part is how many of us even when we're doing this temptation even when we're doing this thing we are half half assing it which is kind of funny um on the other hand, if they do cheat with you, you might feel safe knowing that this new relationship is likely not going to work because of its messy start. It's not, uh, quote, it's not setting yourself up for success, Morley said. Those relationships don't tend to flourish because there are a lot of complicated feelings that doom in many ways. Women are usually painted as the villain, even though it takes two to tango in each of these situations, as some people online pointed out. Women like Grande can receive more public hate, even if they're not the ones who cheated on their partners. People especially get mad, wait, yeah, especially if they're, yeah, okay. Uh, people especially get mad at women because there's a sense of women being in a pact. Yeah, I get that. I f I'm one of those people who like don't understand women who betray other women like that. There can be an ex expectation 
that men will always cheat and that it's on a woman to help prevent that or it's on women to always prevent that, Morley said. So when a woman breaks that by being the person to cheat with a married man, it seems like it's breaking the bigger agreement that we all unknowingly have. True, true. She also noted that it's perspective, that, that this perspective takes away men's autonomy to not cheat or be held accountable for their choices. For sure, we always wanna make sure we hold people accountable. Grande's relationship with Slater is still new and under a lot of speculation, but Twitter user Ashley Ray jokingly brought up a great point. She said, breaking up with your girlfriend, I'm bored, so that's on the men if they aren't doing step one, breaking up with their girlfriends. Um. Okay, that's the end of that. I will say there is something about this that I think is true for me and I'll admit this like I do think women should have like a little bit of a pack together that we don't break up relationships and if we're not going to like I don't I had I've had like female friends cheat it's not that like it's not men and women cheat okay it's just how they do it non-binary people we all cheat people cheat okay I don't cheat but they cheat and I've asked my female friends, like, what are we doing? And they're like, you know, I'm lonely. I want to be seen. He, they, they're great. Like, he, she's showing me affection. Lesbian cheating is a thing. Queers cheat, guys. Every, people be cheating. It doesn't matter your category. Don't think you're better off because you're women. But I do think there's a select feminist foundation and a certain kind of woman that tries very hard to, ups to be better. And... Again, I don't identify with political feminism, but I obviously believe in the philosophy of feminism in a really strong way. And I do think I'm a woman, so I want to uplift women to be better. And you should be better to your male partners. You should be better to your female partners. You should be better to your partners in general. And being better usually means not breaking a promise. Cheating can't occur unless you've made a vow or a promise. That's what cheating is, right? It can't be cheating if it's negotiated. It's an open relationship, it's been negotiated. If it's poly, it's been negotiated. Of course, you can cheat in those relationships as well because you could say, oh, I'm gonna have sex with these 10 people but not these 10 people. And then if you have sex with those 10 people you said you wouldn't, hello, it's a deceit. Why do you want to deceive your partners? Now, I'm gonna link this article in the chat so you guys have it so you can see what I referenced earlier. This is what I am curious about. Do you think it is unfair that if you cheat, people might not trust you? Now, I don't think once a cheater, always a cheater, but I do think in order for you not to be a cheater again, you have to fundamentally understand what you did wrong. You have to truly understand what you did wrong. Otherwise, yes, I think once a cheater, always a cheater because you're going to do it again because you don't under even understand why it was wrong. So I have friends that I always joke with where I'm like, hey, how does it feel knowing that like I have to tell people not to date you because you cheated? Like, and they're like, oh my God. And I'm like, it's true. If people came to me and said, hey, should I date your like so-and-so, so-and-so? I'd be like, um, no, they're kind of like in a cheating phase of their life. And people, you know, other people would be like, um, you know, you should discover on your own whether or not, no, I'm going to stop you now. Don't waste your time. Move on. I have no problem being friends with people who are morally questionable as long as they understand I'm going to tell people. <laughs> I'm going to warn people, Okay. I've got to be able to warn people because it's not fair for my reputation to pretend that my friends don't have a particular reputation, right? Comments say I cheated with a guy when I was 18. He was in a long distance relationship with my, with my quote friend, but like frenemy who spent a horrible rumor, spread a horrible rumor about me in the ninth grade, making almost everyone in my grade outcast me, making me sincerely want to unalive myself. We were on an, on and off friends for four years, but she was always cruel behind my back, gaslighting me regularly. Two weeks before I cheated with the guy who kind of pressured me to chug alcohol prior to it happening, my best friend had OD'd and died. Oh my God, bro, this story. So I was living in a state of disassociation. This sounds like a bunch of excuses, but I felt extremely immoral and ashamed. I mean, I think what we can take from stories like this is that it has to involve dysfunction. The reason I think cheating involves dysfunction it's because dysfunction means like not to work properly, right? You're not functional. And so there's a dysfunction. And I think you're just explaining like a, a pretty good reason of why cheating can occur because it's dysfunction, which is why we wanna, we wanna aim to be healthy as to reduce that harm, right? You go on to say, I stopped having sex because I started weeping, but you say cheaters will get karma. And the girl did text me and say, karma's gonna stab you in the back and I said no karma just
thing. Uh, oh, just finally, I assume you meant did. This is the thing, like dysfunction breeds more dysfunction. So I think ultimately when we're looking at our life and we're thinking like, why am I self-harming? Why am I doing this? We're trying to solve the dysfunction, the thing that isn't functioning, right? I think whether you believe in karma or not, I think it eats away at your, whether you think you have a soul or a consciousness, it eats away at your sense of self. Are you a person whose sense of character involves like cheating? Some people for sure, some people will always be cheaters. Some people always have a wandering eye. And if you're a person who wants to recover from a past mistake you made, how are you going to signal to the people around you that you take it very seriously that like cheating occurred? You don't want to like, you don't want to like beat yourself up for the next 30 years because you cheated one time when you were 15. Like everybody slow down. It also depends when you cheat and how you did it. Are you like a 15 year old in high school? Like, yeah, it's hurtful, but it's not the same as a 45 year old married person with 10 kids having an affair. That's different. It's not the same as like a married couple who's committed or a committed couple married or not who's committed and somebody gaslighting their partner into believing like everything's fine. I'm not cheating. You're making it up in your head only to finally realize like, oh no, they were cheating, right? Again, when we're having these conversations, we need to take into consideration the context. Everyone has their moments of dysfunction. Everyone has a spectrum of dysfunction in their life. The question is, what are we going to do with that dysfunction? Are we going to heal it or are we going to make it bigger? And then are we ready to fight the demons we've created in our own life? It's a lot. There's a lot there, right? Eastern karma is significant, dif significantly different from the westernized karma, for sure. I think um, karma, from my understanding, is not the westernized thinking of like, you did bad, you'll get bad. Karma is what you put into the world as a reflection of what you and like you surround yourself with. It's more a it's more power in your hands. From my understanding of the uh, the difference is that it's not just like, oh, you did bad, you'll get bad. It's more like karma is like what you've curated for your own environment. It's a self-inflicted wound. It's not about being, it's not about venge, being um, vengeful. It's not about like, oh, the universe is going to get you. That's a punishment. It's more like you are the power, you have the power of your own karma. You have the power of your own life, right? That's like, I, I could be a misunderstanding it, but that's kind of how I understand it. In my head. My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth Life is a fool. 